Number nine, explain why the ions Na plus and Cl minus are strongly solvated in water, but not in hexane, which is a solvent composed of nonpolar molecules. Okay, so for this question, we just have to explain why we have these charges, right? Na plus, Cl minus, so sodium and chloride. Why are they strongly solvated in water, but not in hexane? Well, when we're talking about solvation, right, or if something is being solvated, this basically, uh, this word, solvation, solvated, right, this just means that your solvent, so sol goes with sol, so when your solvent can interact, interact between, or we'll say with, um, dissociated, substances. And specifically, mainly if you're talking about water, your dissociated substances are going to be ions. Now we have our solutes here, right? Our solutes, our small little substances, are going to be solvated by the solvent. So in this case, we have water, right? H2O versus hexane. Now, if we draw out um, H2O, right, it's got an oxygen that is bound to two hydrogens. And here's the Lewis structure, right? And we know that water is asymmetrical, right? If I cut this right down the middle, I have electrons on the top and I have hydrogens on the bottom. Water is always going to be a polar substance or a polar molecule. That should be memorized because water, the universal solvent, is going to be seen a lot in your chemistry class. So for water, right, there's a unequal distribution of electrons. The top part in which I drew is going to be way more negative than the bottom. You can't get any more electronegative than a pair of electrons, right? So the negatives are going to be on the top, the partial positive is going to be on the, the bottom, and that's what's classified as a dipole moment. If you have a dipole moment, um, your molecule will have an unequal distribution of electrons, and polar goes with dipole. So I'm going to write the fancy notation for dipole, it's like this like little fancy S. And the tops are the negatives, and the bottoms are the positives. So maybe I could just draw the two positives. Okay. So we got partial negative up top, partial positive on the bottom. Hexane, if we drew out hexane, hexane is C6H14. There are six carbons that are surrounded by 14 hydrogens. But if I just draw the backbone of the hexane, that means that there's six carbons all in a line and then I'm going to put down eight hyd uh, 14 hydrogens around each carbon. And I'm going to, you know, consider the octet rule. So carbon wants to have the uh, eight electrons, the four bonds. And as I'm doing this, just count along with me that we will get the 14 hydrogens and all your elements are satisfied with the octet rule. Now with this, there's no asymmetrical sharing of electrons. If I cut this molecule down the middle like this, you have the same amount of hydrogens on the top, the same amount of hydrogens on the bottom. And if you cut it like this, it's the same on both the left and the right side. This molecule, just like they said, is nonpolar, but just kind of like a recap as to like what you know nonpolar is. It's symmetry. And if you have nonpolar molecules, you have no dipole moment. So there, there is no uh, unequal distribution of charges. Now this is killing me internally, that it is not in the center. There we go. So now, here comes the, basically the, the answer to this question. Why is Na plus and Cl minus solvated with water, but not hexane. There's no charges here for your hexane because everything is nice and symmetrical. But 
with the sodium and the chloride, this came from table salt, which is NaCl, right? Opposites attract. And since we're talking about salvation, the solvent, which is the water, is going to interact with those dissociated ions and opposites attract. If I put this, um, if I put this as like a little, you know, circle, right? One's bigger than the other. The chlorine is going to be way bigger than the sodium. Is it? I think so. Actually, it's the other way around where the sodium will be larger than the chlorine because as you go across a period, your radius will decrease. But same exact idea, opposites attract. If this water molecule is partial negative on the top and positive on the bottom, here comes the positive sodium. Which one do you think it's going to want to be next to? The negative side or the positive side of the water? Yeah, you got it. It's going to be want to be it's going to want to be closer to the negative side because sodium is positive. Opposites attract each other. Opposite charges will attract. And then the chlorine, when it interacts, when it gets solvated by the water interaction, it's going to want to be with the positive hydrogens. So the chlorine is going to be chilling, you know, somewhere over here, right? Maybe we'll just put it somewhere, you know, it just got to be on the bottom somewhere. But that's the idea here where since we have charges, since the water is polar, since it's got a dipole moment, a unequal distribution of charge, negatives go with the positives, right? So the Cl minus will go with the positive part of the water. The negative part of the water, which is the electrons, will go towards the Na plus. And that's basically why, uh, you know, NaCl is solvated in water because charges go with charges. This specific... Uh, interaction or salvation is called an ion dipole interaction or attraction, maybe I'll say, where you purely have ions, right? You got two of them in this case. You got Na plus and Cl minus coming in with something that has a dipole moment. That's your uh, polar uh, molecule. And because you have a polar molecule coming in with an ion, that's an attraction, salvation. This doesn't have anything to do with it because there's no charge on the hexane. And that's it for this one. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to this channel uh, to help us out. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Um, and I look forward to helping you with more questions. So stay tuned, okay? The only way that you get better, the fastest way, is to just keep doing problems. And that's why we have thousands of videos on the channel for you guys to just comb through these videos um, and do the problems with us so that come test day, you won't be surprised uh, by anything that's on that test. So keep doing the problems. I believe in you guys and let's go. All right. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.